What's up you guys? Welcome back. Today I am super excited because we're gonna be doing something a little bit different. I have only done a couple of these videos I think in like the lifetime of my channel. But today we're basically gonna do like a full face of my holy grail makeup products and the makeup products that I will always repurchase. Because so often on my channel I do like testing new makeup videos so I can show you guys the new stuff that's coming out and test it out and it's like always new things because obviously that's fun and exciting. But I feel like it's also super important to show you guys like, hey, these are my OGs. These are the products that I always go back to that I use all all the time off camera too that are like my absolute staples that I have repurchased a million times that are amazing and I have loved for years. A lot of you guys will probably be able to guess a lot of these favorites. Um, if you've watched my videos for a while, I've talked about all of these on my channel at some point and they're just like my holy grails that I will always go back to and have loved for years. So there's not like new favorites here. Like this is like tried and true. Has been with me and stayed. So I'm really, really excited. Make sure you guys subscribe to my channel if you have not already and click the little bell right next to the subscribe button so you can be notified of all my future uploads loads and without further ado let's go ahead and get started okay primer is the one category where I picked two I didn't do it in any other category but these two primers are so different and a lot of times I use both of them because they do completely different things so first we have the elf poreless putty primer this is just the best I absolutely love it mine is clearly well used it has like so many divots in it this is just great to fill in the pores especially if you have textured skin like I do I love to go in with this even if I'm gonna use another primer as well and tap it in this area of my face to just give me a little bit more of a smooth look and kind of smooth over that texture or anywhere that I have in large pores. It's so good. Rivals so many high-end products that are very similar to this with way larger price tags. So this is always a product that I go back to continue to use and continue to repurchase. So I just tap that in. I normally focus it right in this area and right in between the brows as well. Next, we have the L'Oreal Lumi Glotion. And this stuff is so good. I have used this for so long. It's finally getting, I feel like, the hype that it deserves because people realize that it was a good dupe for Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Filter. And so many people are buying it now, which also makes it really hard to find in store anymore. So I've been ordering mine off Amazon because um, every time I go to look for it and rebuy it, it's sold out. But I love this. It gives the prettiest glow to the skin. It's very subtle. Um, I actually need to repurchase another one because I'm running out of this one. But it really just helps to add a little glow and luminosity on days when you're really not wearing a lot of makeup. You could totally just wear this on its own. It's not going to really give you coverage. It's just going to give a slight glow and very slight tint to the skin. It does come in, I think, four different shades. I'm just using it in shade medium and just gives a nice little healthy glow and boost kind of to the skin. I really love the new e.l.f. the Halo liquid filter. I have one of them sitting on my desk right here. Um, that's really good, too. They're different. That one... Because people were asking me when I tried that one, like how it compared to the L'Oreal Lumi Glotion. This one is not going to give you coverage. It's just going to kind of give you a glow with a little bit of a tint. The e.l.f. one has coverage to it. Um, like in my opinion, it could just be worn as like a complexion product completely on its own, where this typically I would pair with a foundation over top, unless I was just having a day where I was really wearing very, very minimal makeup. So this one's much less coverage. They're both really pretty, but in my opinion, do work quite differently. But the e.l.f. one is very new, so I didn't want to include it in this video because this is like reserved for like the products that I have loved for like 17 years, you know, like you guys know. But as you guys can see, it just kind of amps up the glow of the skin and is really pretty. Now for a foundation, I know if you guys watch me, you can guess what this is. Too Faced, Born This Way. Love, love, love this foundation. I will say in 2022, there was a lot of really great foundation that have come out. For a long time, this was one of the only foundations that I used like literally ever, like every single day. I still definitely use this, still go for it. If I have a big event, something important, this is a foundation that I grab for because it's so good. I'm loyal to it. I know it's going to be an amazing foundation. It's gonna last all day. It looks like natural skin, but better. I absolutely love it. And this one has definitely like withstood the test of time for me at least, because it's literally been a favorite of mine for I can't even remember how long since like I was in like college or slightly after I think so definitely quite a while it has a natural finish so it's kind of like in between matte and dewy so it just mimics natural skin wears beautifully throughout the day like sometimes if people just like don't know what kind of foundation they want and they're just like I just want like something that's gonna look nice this is always the one that I recommend to people because I feel like whether you have dry skin oily skin whatever it's just a foundation that works at least for me um, I absolutely love it. And I wore it on my wedding day and like all the other important events. So definitely a fave. Up next for concealer, we have the trusty Tarte Shape Tape. This I feel like was one of the first concealers on the market that really like was full 
full coverage that was actually really good. Not to say that there wasn't other full coverage concealers, but this was the first one that I really, really loved that I felt really worked for me and still one that I reached for all the time today. Um, normally I'll use medium like on my face if I have anywhere that I wanna add like a little bit extra coverage, like shade medium. Just go in and like spot conceal. Honestly, that foundation gave us a pretty good coverage so I don't have many places that I need to spot conceal. And then I'll use light medium for underneath my eyes. They have come out with a creamy version of this. If you found that the original was too drying for you. They do have a creamy version. Honestly, I have dry skin, but this was never like super drying on my under eyes for me personally. And I used to use, if you guys have watched me back in the day, like so, so much of it. So now I use a lot less, even though it still is, seems like a lot. Just has always been a ride or die concealer for me that I love. Will cover up anything. Like if you got a big breakout, it's gonna work. If you got under eye bags, it's gonna work. Like whatever it is, it's a product that I know that I can always count on. I love it, it's an OG and I still reach for it all the time. And you guys do know, as always, I do have an affiliate code with Tarte, which is code Kelly. So feel free to use it if you want to get a discount. It should give you 15% off of everything on their website. But yeah, our complexion is looking flawless. Speaking of Tarte favorites, love the Breezy Cream Bronzer from them. This is a beautiful cream bronzer. It blends like a dream and is just super easy to work with. So I love to use this to cream contour. They do have Breezy Cream blushes as well, which are like cream blushes from them, which are also really nice, but I do have a different OG favorite cream blush, but this cream bronzer is really good. I use it in the shade Seychelles. I think I'm mispronouncing that, but I believe that's the shade, but super flawless, easy to use. But the blushes that I love are the putty blushes from Tarte. So the OG, I'm not from Tarte, I mean Elf, sorry guys. The Elf putty blushes, like the OG original ones were like the first cream blushes that I actually really liked. Um, and then they just recently came out with the Luminous putty blushes. So I'm gonna use the Luminous one today. This one in the shade Isla Del Sol is beautiful, but really all of them I love, including the OG originals. They again are super easy to work with. I feel like in the past, I didn't love cream products because I felt like you had to blend them for so long and then they never looked great and it just took too long where with these, they just blend flawlessly into the skin. They don't pick up the foundation or any other products underneath and just look so pretty. This one specifically, I really like because it's so bright. So it looks like, whoa, like, is that gonna be crazy? But then it just looks so pretty on the cheeks. I've been using it like all summer long for a bright little pop and I love it. Four powders, I, these came out I think in, 2022 or maybe 2021, but ever since I tried these, I was like, okay, these are like the best powders ever. Makeup Forever Ultra HD setting powders. These are stunning. I use shade number one underneath my eyes, shade two or three on the rest of my face. Today I'm gonna use shade two. They're beautiful, especially for the under eyes. Like even if you don't wanna go in and powder your whole face, using this on the under eyes makes such a big difference because it really blurs the skin. Like it sets the under eyes, but then it also blurs them so well and adds a little bit of brightness. It's just absolutely flawless and looks so good. Sets everything in place without drying you out because some loose powders can just make you look like a cakey mess where this one really does not do that. Like. I feel like you can see a significant difference side to side on the side that I used it on versus the side that I didn't. It really just smooths everything over and makes everything look so nice. So I absolutely love this. And I've already repurchased it multiple times. It is just so, so good, even though it's like a somewhat, like it's newer compared to a lot of these products that have been out for like six or seven years. All right, I went ahead and zoomed you guys in for us to do our brows. Now there are three different products that I use for my brows and I love all of them. So first one is the CoverGirl Micro Fine Brow Pencil. I'm just kind of schooling. My brows in place, I love this. This has been with me since literally forever. This is in the shade Honey Brow. So I normally will use this to outline the bottom of my brows like so and I can use this to fill in your entire brow and it will look really nice It works really honestly like any like high-end micro fine like brow pencil That's like skinny like this It's such a good dupe because it's incredible and just as good But what I like to do is actually go in with a clear brow gel. So my go-to has been the makeup by Mario brow gel because this one is truly clear and it helps to like get your brows in place and fluff them up but it doesn't create make them like that weird like grayish crunchy kind of weird texture and color that a lot of brow gels can do so I really like this one for that and I kind of go in with this and like mold the brows into place and then I like to go in with the Tarte DIY brow pen and just kind of add in little hairs wherever I have sparse hair, you can do this with the CoverGirl brow pencil that I used before, but it gives more of like a, um, 
uniformed appearance instead of like the tiny little like brow like strokes that this will give you. So that's why I like using a brow pen. But the three of those products work so well together and I love them. So those are kind of like my three holy grails when it comes to my brows. But if you only wanna get one brow product, then I would say go for the CoverGirl Micro Brow. It's really good. All right, for my eyes, this one was kind of hard because I feel like eyeshadow palettes is something where I always am using new ones and there's so many different things to choose from. So it's really hard, but I would say like overall in like my entire like makeup career, or at least in the past couple of years, the one that I have reached for the most consistently has been the ColourPop Going Coconuts palette. This is an oldie from ColourPop, like before they had 7 billion trillion million palettes, like literally, um, this was one of their oldies. And I still to this day use this all the time. It's a beautiful neutral palette. There's not too many shades in it. So it's not like overwhelming. There's literally nine shades. You have mattes, you have shimmers they're neutral they're not super warm toned or super cool toned and i just absolutely love this palette i think i always will so after much deliberation that's the one that i ended up deciding on and it does have a mirror in it too which is nice a lot of ColourPop palettes do not and if you're like me and you like to see like really up close when you're doing your eyeshadow having a big mirror like this does make a difference um and is super helpful so we're gonna go ahead and do a look with this i'm gonna use the shade lovey bunch first and this is kind of just like a go-to eyeshadow look that i do if i want to do something nice but i don't have time to experiment like do something crazy and different this is like a go-to and people always are like, oh my God, what did you do in your eyes? I love it. And I'm like, oh, it's literally very easy. Um, just using this as like a neutral transition shade. Then I like to go in with Culotta. This one is a little bit more cool toned and go in with that. You can even drag this down the side of your nose too. Get a little nose contour with it like so. And also this palette is like 14 bucks. So it's very affordable too, which is great. Then I like to go in with Nutty, which is this deeper, darker brown. I'm gonna focus that in this outer part of the eye. Same thing on this eye. Then I'm gonna go over the lid with shade Coco Crush. It's a really pretty shimmer like boom. Pigment on this is crazy. So pretty. And then I'll go back in with the shade Nutty, which is the deepest color, and just kind of bring this on the lower lash line about halfway. And then the upper lash line, like as a little wing. Blend it out with a little Shell Yeah. Just kind of buff that on the lower lash line. And then mix together these two lightest colors to place right beneath my brow bone and in the inner corners. And then I'm just gonna hit my waterline with the ColourPop Exit Gel Liner. So as of, this is like literally always sold out. It's so hard to get a hold of, I feel like, on the ColourPop website. But as of right now, when I'm filming this, it is available. I'm using like a limited edition one. Um, but the regular one, it's the same thing. It's just their white gel liner. This is so good because it's like white without being too white and it doesn't budge on the waterline. So I love this one and have used it like forever. I do have an affiliate code with ColourPop as well. It'll work on both of these. You can use code Kelly to get 10% off if you'd like to, but love these two together too. I feel like it just makes the eyes look bright and wide and like awake. Um, now for lashes, this is another one that the OGs will know, the Salon Perfect 614. So within the past Past year or so I've really started to love half lashes and there are a lot of them that I really love but these are still if I'm doing a full strip lash these are my go-to they're so easy to apply they look really natural on um, like they're long and wispy without looking crazy and they're just beautiful and you can find them in store at Walmart and how I like to apply them is just with the kiss lash glue liner it makes it super easy because it's a lash glue and liner in one so you just bring this on your upper lash line and pop your lashes right on with it and I am just now realizing that I put my lashes on before I did my mascara. Oh my goodness. So, I mean, you can do it either way. I actually used to do it this way. So for the OGs, I guess I'm doing it the way I used to. I used to always put my lashes on first and then do my mascara, but I've grown to realize that it's a lot easier to do the mascara first. So I'm going with the Milani Anti-Gravity. I was gonna use a different mascara because this is a newer favorite of mine, but I feel like by doing that, I would just be doing you guys like a disservice. This is like the best, I love it so much. So I didn't wanna just not use it because it's new, like it's so good and I grabbed for this more than anything else. I already repurchased another one because I use it like literally every day. So I'm gonna go in and coat my lashes on this side before I go in with the falsies. I'm gonna let the glue dry over here and I'll just go in with like a little bit over here. I guess it's not bad applying the mascara with the falsies. 
falsies on either. Either way, it works. I feel like adding the mascara after does help to kind of blend the lashes a little bit better. I will say that. I'm just gonna pop the lashes on my other eye now. Looks good. And I'll do a little lower lash eye mascara. And then our eyes are all done. We just gotta finish up the face a little bit. So bronzer was another one that was kind of hard. I have a lot of bronzers that I really like, but one that I always, always reach for is this Tarte Park Ave Princess one. This is their Amazonian clay. It's waterproof. The shade for me is really great. It's matte, but not drying. So it's really great to kind of contour and chisel out the face with and just a go-to that I always go back to. But it was hard to choose. Like some categories were definitely harder than others. Like foundation, I was like definitely too face born this way. Concealer, definitely Tarte Shape Tape. But then other ones, I'm like, oh, I have so many favorites. I don't know. But I didn't want to have like, oh, here's five. You know, I just wanted to pick one. Um, for blush, I had to go with the NARS Orgasm X. I like the regular Orgasm one, but the Orgasm X is just so, so good. It's brighter and I personally like it better. So it's just stunning on, there are drugstore alternatives to this that look similar, but this one is just so pretty. So I had to use the OG and I love the pop that it gives to my cheeks. Highlight was another one that was really hard, but I had to go with Benefit Cookie. This is an oldie, but a goodie. Recently, I've been reaching for it a lot more again because I'm like, ah, this is so pretty. It's the perfect mix of like icy, but it has like a pinky like peachness to it too, so that it still looks like really blinding on, but it's not like too much. I just love it. And it has definitely been the one that I have reached for most often recently, but this is another category that it was very hard to pick. Okay, for liner, my OG favorite is just the NYX Retractable Lip Liner in the shade Nude. It is so good. And I feel like it's a super similar color to my actual lips. So it just kind of helps to add like a border on them. And then for lipstick, an OG, but an amazing one is the Revlon Untold Stories. I've talked about this for so long. It is just the perfect pinky matte nude. Not too light, not too dark. Lasts a really long time, but it's not drying to the lips. It's just beautiful. Still a go-to that I use all the time. And then of course, the Tarte H2O lip gloss in the shade Sandy Toes. Also absolutely beautiful. Looks really good topped with that lip color or on its own too. I like this lip gloss because it's super juicy and glossy to the lips, but it also does last quite a while as well. Like it lasts a lot longer than a lot of my other lip glosses do, but it's not super sticky. So love that. And then the OG Urban Decay All Nighter Setting Spray. To set everything down and in place. And this is the completed look with all my OG favorites. I love this look. I've done it a million times with all those products together. I feel like I don't know if I've ever even done it on camera though with all of those favorites together in one video, but I do this look all the time, especially when I know I wanna look nice, but I don't like have time or want to try anything new. This is like a go-to for me. So I hope that you guys enjoyed today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll have all the products linked down below and I'll see you guys very soon in my next video. Bye.